Hello, my name is Matthew Marquette and welcome to this uh, video tutorial on how to tile textures using pretty much the industry standard clone method. Uh, this is a pretty simple method. I'm just going to go over it pretty quickly. Uh, if you guys need a pause or whatever, you can do that uh, and then uh, or rewind and so on. Anyways, uh, I'm actually going to open up a file that I've already got that I'm going to use for this. Uh, it's on my desktop here. I'm going to open this up. And I call it the clone method because we use the clone stamp tool. Now, this is not a universal um, method. I will say that there are a couple situations where tiling textures um, is going to require a different kind of method, whether it be an alpha or selection method, but I'll cover those in different videos. Um, but as I said before, this one's going to be focusing more on the uh, clone method. Now, first things first, we need to make a new document. I brought this image in, but truth be told, we usually want to create a document the size uh, that our texture is going to be. In this case, I want to do a 1024 by 1024 texture. So these are going to be um, uh, obviously uh, powers of two. We want to make sure that we're at 72 uh, on our resolution, RGB color, all of these things that are default pixels, not inches. That could be a kind of crazy thing if you had left it to uh, inches when you created uh, your image but either way I'm gonna hit create here and so now we have our uh, image now there's a couple of different ways that we can take this image from uh, this tab into the other one so I want to actually bring this image over because this is the image we're gonna tile and I can actually pull the tab off of Photoshop here grab the move tool and drag it into the scene that is one way of course I can also hit control a to select all control C to copy I can shut that off and then control V to paste in. Now I have two layers down here. I don't need both of them obviously, so I'll delete one of them. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this image, as long as we have our snaps on, I can snap it to the top corners, right? So we make sure that we just get that image right there. Now I'm gonna hold down Alt and use my mouse wheel to zoom out. And you'll see that we can get a little bit more real estate when I hit control T, which is our transform tool. This allows us to see all these hidden pixels on the outside of the document here. Um, if you do not cut these hidden pixels out when you go to tile, your image will never, ever, ever be seamless. Uh, no matter what you do, it will never tile, it'll never work. So this is a step you cannot forget. Uh, anyways, as you scale down, if you don't hold down shift, you can distort it. In some cases, it might be okay like this because it's a little, you know, ambiguous about the shapes and, and so on. But uh, as far as it's, you know, usually concerned, you want to hold down shift, which allows you to keep the proportions. You just get real close to the size of the window, let go, hit enter, and there you go. You've got your image uh, inside there. Now, we've just, all we did in this particular move was just to shrink it down so it fits the window a little bit better. So you can tell that I'm using an image larger than what I want to do uh, as far as the size uh, of my document is concerned. So if I want to do a 1024 texture by 1024, I'm obviously going to find an image that's larger. We don't want to take images that are smaller and scale them up. That kind of defeats the point. Uh, it actually will look blurry and pixelated if you do that, depending on how, how large it is um, or small it is, I should say. Um, but what we're going to do here in order to get rid of these extra pixels, really simple method. We just grab the crop tool, which is over here on the left panel, and we just double click. I mean, that's pretty much it. At this point, if you want to confirm that it is the right size, you hit Control T, uh, which is that transform tool. Again, you'll notice that our bounding box literally fits the image. If you did it right, that is what it should look like. If you did it wrong, you'll still see pixels on the outside or whatever. Um, okay, so from here, all we have to do is offset the image. Now, typically, I make a duplicate of the layer. You can duplicate it by hitting Control J, or you can duplicate it by dragging onto the new layer button. Uh, thirdly, you can even right click and duplicate layer uh, down here also. Um, let's see, where are we? Duplicate layer up here. I never use this one because it takes the longest. Um, but either way, you can do those three different things. My, my preference is just to drag it on the new layer button. But either way, uh, I only do this so that I have a backup just in case I really mess it up as I'm uh, trying to fix it. So we're going to take this layer, make sure the top layer is selected, and we go to uh, Filter. We're going to go all the way down to Other, and we're going to choose Offset. So I click on Offset here. Now, by default, I've already done this before, so you're going to see that my... Uh, thing says horizontal 512 vertical 512 um, I'm choosing 512 by 512 uh, because it is literally 
half of my 1024 by 1024 document. And the reason why we do that, and I'm just going to hit OK here, is that uh, we know that our seams are going to be directly down the middle. So basically when you offset, you basically take a pixel from this side and put it over here. Same thing from the top to the bottom. If you do 512 pixels and move them over, this right here, this used to be this top corner. This right here used to be the bottom corner. So basically we just kind of, like I said, offset the image. So the middle of the document is seamless because this little piece lines up with this little piece over there and say something like this lines up with something up here because this used to be the middle of the document. So all you have to do is paint these seams out and we have a seamless or tiling texture. So per method, as I was talking about before, you have a couple things you can do. You can do the clone stamp. You can also do spot healing. So this works too, um, but clone stamp is what people are used to using. I mean, basically I'll show you both, but what we want to do is I'm going to increase the size of the brush here by using the bracket keys, the left and right bracket keys, which are next to the letter P, and you can change the size of your brush. You also want to make sure that your brush is set to a soft brush. Now this one is, as its hardness is set to zero, um, but if we say, and I'll, I'll show you why in a moment here. So if I select this, I hold down Alt, and you can see my icon changes. I click left mouse button. I now have that as my sample, and I can actually start painting. Now that looks pretty good, as you can see there, as I paint out the seam and just kind of paint the stuff over here. However, if I had it set to a hard brush, and I did the same thing, you'll see here as I paint with a hard brush, we've now created all these kind of mini seams on both sides. If I zoom up in the document uh, using uh, Alt mouse wheel, you can kind of see right there that we created these, um, these hard seams, and that's actually just kind of totally defeating the point. So I'm going to Control Z to undo that. We're going to set this back to the soft brush, and uh, I can continue to do that holding down Alt, choosing an area that I want to write, or not write, but copy, and also pay attention to what a little plus is. You see it on the left, bottom left. That's copying uh, whatever I'm seeing over there. So if I go too far, it will copy the edge of the document, hence I'll get another seam and so on. So always pay attention to where you're copying from. Now, of course, just so I can show you also, you don't have to use the clone. You can also use the spot healing. Same thing. This one, you don't really have to do much. You just increase the size of it. Um, you can change certain things up here like the hardness. I'm going to drop the hardness down to zero. And then you can just draw a line across and just get right to the edge of the document. Don't go past the edge and then let go. And it should work pretty well. Right? Uh, some people like to draw it out just a little bit more than normal just so it's, you know, kind of evens it out a little bit better and so on. Right? So we can go like that. And we'll just kind of get that top piece a little bit better. Um, now, if you, if you, if you kind of like what uh, uh, you're seeing and you don't see any more seams, typically what you want to do is you want to go to filter and then offset it again. It does remember your last filter, so that's up here. If you go to other offset, it's still down here, but it does remember the last one, so I'll click on that. And the reason why I went to offset it again is just to double check there isn't any seams. So I can zoom in and I can see right here uh, that I've got a little bit of a seam, so I can shrink the size of this and kind of paint that over. And that's a little bit of Photoshop uh, making noises at me. Um, but we just check for those little areas on the on the um, basically the uh, little plus areas. So the corners are usually where a lot of times you'll get some of your seams. But if it looks good, then you're set. All you have to do is save this out, and now you have yourself a tiling texture. Now, just so you can see what it looks like when it tiles, this is not a necessary step. So if you're done, this is all you need to do. You just save your file. Everything's great. But if you want to see a kind of a cool little uh, extra step, if you go up to the top here where it says 3D, you can click on New Tiled Painting from Layer. And what that's going to do is it's going to ask if you want to go to the 3D workspace. I'm going to say no. But what it's going to do is it's going to show me my texture repeating a whole bunch of times, right? And if I actually hold my mouse down, that this is 3D, and you can actually see what it looks like. So you can kind of get a gauge of what it might look like as it tiles over and over again in an environment. Okay, now the only way I know how to get out of this is just to back up by hitting Control-Alt-Z a couple times to get out of that. Uh, make sure that you don't save it in 3D mode. Uh, that's clearly not what you want to do. But just save it like this, and everything's great. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I guess I'll see you guys in the next video.